Hi everyone, welcome back to Food Feeds. In this video, I'm going to talk about hydrocolytes, which is a very important topic because of its wide application in food industries. And it also covers a major part of food editors as well. So before starting, I always suggest you to have a pen and paper with you. By the end of the video, you will have your handmade notes, which will be helpful for you for any exam or revision purpose. So let's begin. So first, let's know about what are hydrocolytes and gums. So these belong to a diverse group of long-chain polymers and they are especially characterized by the property to form a viscous dispersion or gel when they are dispersed in water. So whenever this hydrocolytes comes in contact with the water, they form a viscous dispersion or gel-like substance, which is a very helpful a functional property in food industries. So these materials were first found in extradates from the trees, bushes or extracts from the plants or seaweeds. And they're also found as a gummy slimes uh, during the fermentation process. Since there is the occurrence of large number of hydroxyl groups um, in the nature, they have an increasing affinity towards water molecules, which uh, gives them the property of being an hydrophilic compounds. And as I mentioned, they are dispersion. So they lie in between uh, the, being a true solution and a suspension. So that is why they are termed as hydrocolytes. And considering the true properties, that is, uh, since they are hydrophilic and also they are a collide, they usually are addressed as hydrophilic collides or hydrocolytes. And as I mentioned, hydrocolytes have a wide variety of functional properties in food industry. So uh, majorly they are applied as emulsifying agents, stabilizing agents or gelling agents, thickening agents, or even uh, in case of coating. And the major primary reason for these many applications from hydrocolytes is mainly because of the two major reasons. The first is their flow behavior, which represents its viscosity. And the second one is the mechanical solid property, which is a texture. So any modification of texture or viscosity of a food system will help us to even modify the sensory properties of a food product. So most of these hydrocolytes, they belong to a category of permitted food additives. So uh, legally, it is approved to use these hydrocolytes much easier than compared to any chemical additives. So in case of food like uh, soups, salad dressings and toppings, these hydrocolytes are used for the purpose of getting a good viscous solution and as well as the mouthfeel. Whereas the same hydrocolytes can be used in case of ice cream, desserts, cake and candies to get a desired properties. So in addition to these functional attributes of hydrocolytes, in future, uh, possibly there will be a positive endorsement for this hydrocolytes because of the recognition that recently the fibers are getting um, as these fiber contribute to the physiological benefits of a natural function. So because of this, there will be additional added health benefits also from these hydrocolytes in future. So as I mentioned, the functional properties of these hydrocolytes are the major reason for its applicability in food industry. So in this video, I'll be covering the functional properties of these hydrocolytes. So let's start with one by one. So the first functional property we are considering is viscosity enhancing or thickening property of hydrocolytes. So basically, uh, um, Altering the viscosity or the thickening property will in turn affect the sensory property of the food as well. And hence, it has a major application as a food additive. So the thickening effect uh, produced by these hydrocolytes will depend upon uh, the type of hydrocolyte that is being used and what is the concentration of this hydrocolyte. And what is the food system that is used? That is, whether it's a solid food or it's a mixture of liquid solid food so the whole system and uh, what are the components in the system so that will decide uh, what is the effect of this thickening effect of a particular hydrocolyte and the ph of the whole food system and at what temperature is is it being added 
as well as stored. So the best example for this is the ketchup, the tomato ketchup, where the hydrocolloid thickeners are used in order to influence its viscosity. So now we have to know like how this hydrocolloid helps to thicken a particular substance. So how these hydrocolloids thicken a solution? So basically in a dilute solution, all these molecules are freely able to move. So these individual molecules of hydrocolloids can move freely and then they won't be uh, exhibiting any thickening properties. Whereas in a concentrated solution, what happens, these molecules will come in contact with the other molecules and there is a less space for their movement and hence the movement of the molecules become restricted. So the transition from the free moving molecules to an entangled network is called as process of thickening. So from a dilute solution to a concentrated solution when it becomes, so the molecules basically um, get no space for its movement and it will turn to a concentrated solution and this is how the transition of free molecules to an entangled network will help us to get a thick, thickened uh, substance. So the next property we are going to learn is the gelling property. So like viscosity and thickening agent, even uh, the gelling property, there are characteristics of gel particle which depend upon uh, what kind of or uh, the type of hydrocolloid that we are using, the network formation mechanism. That is, uh, usually when there is hydrocolloid forms a gel, uh, there are a number of changes that occurs at a molecular level, like there is a network formation, there is a cross-linking of polymer chains, uh, which will give us a 3D dimension or 3D network structure. So that is... Uh, about, that is referred to network formation mechanism and also the processing method which is used uh, to form these gel particles. So these are the three things that it depends upon. That is the characteristics of this gel form. And usually uh, when there is a formation of gel, the whole particle absorbs the water and uh, it helps us to combine the macroscopic molecules together and form a soft textured product. So um, there's a wide application of this hydrocolloid systems uh, in order to replace these chemically crossed linked starch. That is, currently uh, there's a more usage of these kind of chemicals uh, which are used in order to get a particular texture or the solution based products. But uh, if there is a wider application of hydrocolloid systems, then we can eliminate the usage of chemical treatments. Uh, during uh, structuring or processing or even uh, to change the molecular properties. Next properties is surface activity and emulsifying property, which is very important. So let's understand what are the functionalities of hydrocolytes when it acts as an emulsifier or stabilizer. So first of all, it uh, helps in retardation of precipitation of dispersed solid particles. So which basically means whenever there's a solution, it helps us to not precipitate. Uh, I means if there is a solution and uh, all the solid particles need to be dispersed and it should be stabilized. If, if there is no addition of this emulsifying property or the as surface activity from an hydrocolloid, then there are chances that all these solid particles will settle down and it will um, affect whole texture or the look or all the whole structure of the food system. So it helps us to retard the precipitation of a dispersed solid. So it will help us to keep these solids as a uh, dispersion in, in a dispersion phase in that particular product. In case of um, creaming process, so it will show a decreased creaming rate of oil drops and foams. Prevention of aggregation of dispersed particles, which is similar to the precipitation. Aggregation uh, is related with the solid uh, substances. And prevention of synergesis of gel system containing oils. And the last is retardation of coalescence of oil droplets, which is again uh, joining together of these oil droplets to form a larger molecules. Uh, if we take an example of milk, we do a homogenization process in order to break the fat molecules, right? But if 
uh, all these uniform fat molecules which we have homogenized what if it comes back together and forms again uh, a bigger lumps so retardation of this coalescence of oil droplets is also done by hydrocolloids let's now understand gelling property with an example the most widely used one is the gum arabic so basically it is used to reduce the surface tension and it is the only gum which helps in adsorbing onto oil and water emulsions or the interface between those two and it imparts a proper stabilization that is steric stabilization. So how does it do is because this gum arabic contains two parts both that is peptide which is hydrophobic in nature and it helps to absorb uh, the surface of oil droplet whereas the polysaccharide chain which is also present in the gum arabic it is hydrophilic in nature and it extends out into the solution and that's why it prevents uh, the formation of flocculation or even uh, coming back together of these molecules and it helps to reduce uh, this surface tension as well so there are other gums as well which helps to reduce the same surface and interfacial tension and absorb the solid surfaces to improve the stability of overall oil in water emulsions. So here the pectin as we know it is also widely used uh, for emulsifying character and uh, mainly the citrus and apple pectin is normally used for a low pH uh, gelling or thickening agent. And one thing to note here is uh, the pectin which is extracted from beet sugar uh, that does not form a gel wherever there is a calcium ion present and it also um, doesn't work where there is a higher concentration of sugar. So that is the reason why they are basically used in low pH or, or gelling substances. And one more is microcrystalline cellulose which is also uh, able to stabilize the oil in water emulsion. It has a strong affinity for both oil and water which results in precipitation and it is um, said to have a long-term stability is provided by MCC and it has a complete no solubility in water and that is the reason it ad adsorbs mechanically at the interface. So the next property is hydrocolytes as edible films and coating which has a major application in the packaging industry. So basically these hydrocolytes are used to produce these uh, edible films and coatings on the food surface or in between them and uh, the term edible film means it is a thick layer which can be consumed uh, like along with the food or coated on the food and placed as a bar barrier between the food and surrounding environment and they basically help to inhibit the moisture gas aroma or lipid migration from the food system so next the last one is hydrocolytes as a fat replacers this is because uh, most of us uh, are currently being aware of the link between the diet and health and also with the new processing technologies so because of which fat uh, can be replaced by hydrocolytes and more of research is going on the on this and there are numerous um, hydrocolytes also which are uh, used as a fat replacers and the best example here is the Italian dressing, which includes xanthan gum as a thickener and light mayonnaise contains gorgum and xanthan gum as a fat replacement to enhance the viscosity. So the same uh, hydrocolite can act as a thickener as well as a fat replacers and also helps in increasing the viscosity. And usually the partial replacement of fat, is your, which is done by using the starch, creates a thermoreversible gel. Usually these soft fat-like gels can be made that is by converting it uh, to the necessary degree to produce this thermoreversible and spreadable gels. Usually 25 to 30 percent of solid that is starch in water is needed in order to give an optimal stable structure for a fat replacement. So one example is the inulin, which functions as a fat replacer, but it only acts in the water-based systems. And usually when the concentration of it exceeds 15%, this insulin uh, will have an ability to form the gel or cream and shows an excellent fat-like texture. Here are a few examples 
uh, of hydrocolloids, which acts as either gelling agent, thickener, or emulsifying agent. So basically, agar, alginate, and carrageenan are polysaccharides, which acts as gelling agent. Apart from this, pectin, which acts as a gelling agent, and also gelatin. It also acts as a gelling agent, but it is a protein-based uh, substance. Here for gelatin, they also use uh, fish and pig gelatin uh, for using it as a gelling property. Starch is also used both as thickener and gelling agent. When it comes to cellulose derivatives, they are ma uh, majorly used as thickeners or emulsifying agents. So this was all about hydrocolloids and their functional properties. In the upcoming videos, I'll be covering about the origin and the structure of the same. So if you haven't subscribed the channel yet, do subscribe and also don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will get notified whenever there is a new video uploaded on this platform. Do follow Food Feeds on Instagram and as well as Telegram channel so that you get frequent updates. Do support and share. Happy learning. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.